Well, hello there. My name is John Meyer. I recently upgraded from the FabFilter Pro-Q2 to the Pro-Q3. It's been out for a few years now, but I'm just now getting around to upgrading. And I thought I'd make a video talking about a few things. One, people ask me all the time, what EQ should I buy? And for the longest time, the Pro-Q2 has been my recommendation. This is an oversimplification, but I like to put my EQs into two different categories. I've got my corrective and my creative. And the FabFilter falls in the corrective category. Now, what I like about it the most is that it is a software instrument. It's not trying to be some old piece of gear. It doesn't have fancy knobs that are made to look like a pull tech from the 50s. It's designed to work the way that we use software in 2021, not like a piece of vintage hardware. Another reason why I want to make this video is that I often buy gear and only learn how to use it in the most simple way. There's equipment in this shot right now that I can only use about 33% of. I've researched this plugin a ton for the last week, so hopefully for those of you out there who are considering purchasing, I can provide some basic insight. And for those that have been using it for a while, perhaps I can shed some light on the more advanced features. I figure the best way to demonstrate the plugin is in a real world situation. So here's an eight bar phrase that I wrote yesterday using some of my free prototypes and the Meyer Felt piano. I tried to fill up the mid-range as much as I could with the instrumentation, so that would give me something to go in and have to make some decisions on what I want to get rid of and what I want to keep. I want to start by putting an instance of the Pro-Q3 on the master bus. First things first, you can resize the instrument. You can make it small or you can make it very large. In some DAWs, I believe that you can grab and resize, but you cannot do that in Pro Tools. I love the graphical representation of the frequency spectrum. I know we're supposed to listen with our ears and not with our eyes, but this is very helpful. I'm gonna mute this guitar pad for now so it doesn't carry over so much when I'm talking. First thing we'll do is add a frequency node. So we double click. manipulate this node in two ways. You have controls above it that move around with it, and you've got this main section down here. At the bottom, I can add different types of notch filters or shelves. Uh, we'll go with the bell now. I can affect the slope down here. We'll stick with 12 dB. If I click anywhere in the middle, it adds a bell curve. If I click on the end, it defaults to a low cut. If I go to the top, it defaults to a high cut. At any point, I can undo these things by clicking on the undo or the redo function. I can also work on two different versions. So I've got my B and then I've got my A in case I wanted to jump back and forth between two. That's a pretty handy feature that I don't use enough. The most intuitive way to make the adjustments is to click on the mouse and drag. However, you can make adjustments to the frequency down here or here. You can make your Q adjustments here or by holding down command and pulling up and down, you can make that adjustment. Right now there's only one node, but if I added another node, I could skip back and forth between these two with the arrow keys. I can bypass that particular node here. I could also take these two nodes together. I can select them and then turn them on and off together. With both of them selected, I can also make some pretty fun adjustments like this. A nice feature that I believe is new to this version is the piano roll. So I can go in and draw in, say a particular note, say we add in a D, I can double click there, and I have my frequency. Notice it moves up and down as I make the adjustments, but say you wanted to tune a kick drum or working on samples or whatever, and you wanna make some adjustments to specific frequencies and start there, that can be a very helpful tool. You can quickly make adjustments to the display range. Right now it's at 12 dB, but I can make it 3 dB in case you're mastering and you want to visually see small adjustments in a larger scale, or I can go to 30 dB and make some massive adjustments and see the whole thing. You can go full screen by clicking on this icon. There's a MIDI learn function in case you want to use a MIDI controller to make some of these adjustments, which perhaps that's something you're interested in. I'm not going to cover that in depth or at all. I always leave it on the zero latency processing mode. Uh, there's natural phase and linear phase options, but for what I do, zero latency is usually just fine. Now we're to the analyzer section. Now, when I say that I wanted to learn more about an EQ plugin, this is what I wanted to learn more about. There's some really cool functionality in here. When I turn pre and post off, I see nothing. When I engage pre, I can see what it's like before the EQ. 
when I add post, I can see what the adjustments are doing. I forgot to mention the headphone feature, which is really handy. When I turn this on, I can listen to this node. Now at the bottom, there's some cool features. This first one is called freeze. Now if I play. The frequency spe spectrum builds up or freezes over time, and you can see certain areas where you might have some issues. Now, notice that I have this frequency right here, which is sticking out. Might be something worth addressing. Right here, we have spectrum grab, and this is incredibly cool. If I turn this on and hover the cursor over the spectrum, you'll see what happens. Now, notice that note that I mentioned previously is B5 and it's 28 cents above B5, I can simply grab this and bring it down. So now I have that frequency with a bell curve. One thing I've already found that these tools allow me to do is I'm typically not one to do fairly aggressive looking cuts like this. I'm like, uh, should I really be doing that? But when I hear it in action and it shows me what it thinks the problem is and it gives me an opportunity to listen to that and make that cut, I'm much more inclined to make some aggressive EQ adjustments, especially on uh, synthetic uh, synthesizer pads and, and sounds that are a little unnatural to begin with. Next we have show collisions, which is really cool, but it doesn't work unless you have multiple instances of Pro-Q open and you will see why. So I'm gonna start by creating instances for each of the instruments that I have. Now when I go back to my master channel and I open this up, I have all the instances of Pro-Q3 that are open. So I'm gonna hit play. What you can see are the areas where there might be some frequency buildup from one instrument to the next. I'm looking at the master channel version of this Pro Q3, but I think what we'll do now is start going through these one by one and using some of these tools to make the proper adjustments. And instead of comparing them all to the master, we're gonna compare instrument to instrument. I'm gonna start with this guitar pad track. Listen to it. I'm gonna turn on spectrum grab and freeze and show collisions. With a sound like this, so much of it is taste. Uh, but I know that I've got a lot of mid-range material in this track, so I'm going to cut out everything that I don't want. I'm also going to roll off the bottom end. I'm gonna go back over to the analyzer, and this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this organ track. And the organ has a similar frequency response to the guitar pad. So I wanna to listen to these together. With these red bars, Fab Filter is showing me that there's some masking going on or where the frequencies are on top of one another. So what I have to do now, if I want to try to make these work together a little better, and this is a creative choice, but I want the organ to sit behind the guitar pad in this case. So I'm gonna jump over to the Pro Q3 for the organ. And this time I'm going to bring up the guitar pad. All right, let's take a look at the drums. Now this is from my soft drums and it's everything on one track, kick, snare, hi-hat, and crash. When I hold this down, I can see some of the frequencies that are popping up. If I turn the keyboard off, I can go back to frequencies. If you watch and listen, you can tell that 58 hertz is my kick drum, 
141 hertz is kind of the bottom end of my snare. And then we have the top end of the snare and the hi-hat and all that up here. And then there's a nice drop off in the in the upper or, or in the mid range. So let's look at the, the bottom end of the snare with this 141 hertz. Let's try to find the top end of the snare. This might be a situation where I go for the dynamic EQ settings. Now, what is a dynamic EQ? It's basically like your multiband compressor, but it only EQs the sound in a certain frequency range when it crosses a threshold. And we engage the dynamic EQ by clicking on this button right here. Now we can begin the cross process of increasing the dynamic range here. Two things are happening because the drums are all together. It's grabbing that hi-hat and keeping it a little more in control. If I click on this auto button, I can adjust the threshold. If I wanted to, instead of bringing the gain down uh, when it passes that threshold, I could raise it. The presets are a great place to simply learn what the plugin can do because the manufacturers are going to show you everything that it's capable of in these presets. This plugin kind of blurs the lines on what is a compressor, what is an EQ, when would I go to this? One of the main selling points for FabFilter is that it doesn't require an iLock. So if you just need to have one set of plugins to take up very little space, to not use a ton of processing and be highly functional, you can get a lot done with this package of plugins and even with just this EQ. So now a few more controls that I haven't got to. This is my master bypass, the global bypass button. And then we have 100%, which is the gain scale. What makes that interesting is I can take all of these and say I go here, I'm like, no, nah, I don't want it to be that much so I can bring the gain scale down and it adjusts every single node, or I can go the opposite way and increase the gain scale. So we'll keep that at 100. If I double click, it goes back. Uh, I can flip the phase on a track. There's an auto gain adjust, so it makes automatic adjustments so you're not tricking yourself. Uh, if you're boosting a certain frequency, it's gonna sound different because the gain goes up and that'll make some adjustments. And then we can turn the meters on and off. Here you have your, your main output level and you also have output pan. So you can pan everything hard left or hard right or somewhere in between. Now this has more implications when you go into mid side mode and admittedly that's not something I know a ton about. So be sure to research that if you want to get more into mid-side processing. To recap, I really enjoy using this. Uh, part of its familiarity, I've been using it for probably seven or eight years, the Pro-Q2 and now the Pro-Q3. I love these added features here that I plan on using quite a bit more of, the freeze, the, uh, the spectrum grab. That's gonna come in very handy when you're trying to go in and make quick adjustments to something that's bothering you. I always think of this particular plugin in those situations where I need to fix something. I like to use my Pultec emulations or my Neve EQs when I want to add to the character and I want to boost. Again, 
I'm overgeneralizing, but I've found that when I need to make those quick adjustments, this is the plugin that I go to. And I also like having one plugin that I know almost everything about. That's only gonna help me when I'm creating because I don't wanna have to learn my way through a plugin. And this one is winning at the moment for me. So if you're looking for that one plugin to have, that one EQ that can do everything, this is probably the way to go. And then you can add in other EQs for more creative purposes to add more character to the sound. But as an all-in-one solution, I don't know if you're gonna do better than this. And they make so many other great products like the Pro C and the Limiter and the Reverb, all of which I use and all of which I don't know everything about. So if you found this to be helpful and you would like me to do more of this, if there's stuff in my studio that you're like, John, how does that work? And I might not know the answer. So that might be a good candidate for future videos. So if there is something that you've seen in my workflow that you'd like me to address, please leave that in the comments and I'll see you next week.